So let's talk about these wave patterns, these standing waves that the electrons can adopt around the nucleus. Mathematically, we'll call these wave functions because we can mathematically describe what their form is. A wave function tells us everything we know about the particle. Mathematically, the function has a defined value at every position and at every time. The form of the wave function is determined by the particle's energy, by its mass, and by the force fields it encounters. So the force fields in the case of an electron in an atom would be the electric charge of the nucleus and the electric charges of the other electrons around it. If we have a molecule, then it's going to be affected by the electrons of the other atoms and by the nuclei of the other atoms. We'll get to that in due course. What does this wave function actually mean? Well, it turns out if you square the amplitude, if you square the functional value, what it tells you is the probability density. Now, what that means is there's a probability of one that this electron is somewhere in the universe. Where the wave function is high, there's a high probability that the electron will be found in that region. Where the wave function has a low value, there's a very low probability that the electron will be found there. Well, how do these wave functions typically behave? What do they look like? If an electron has high energy, then its wave function is going to have more nodes. More nodes means the nodes are closer together and the wavelengths have to be closer. The exact shapes of these standing electron waves in atoms are determined by four mathematical parameters, which we call quantum numbers. The first three, n, l, and m sub l, tell us what the shape of this standing wave is going to be. n tells how many nodes there are. L tells what type of nodes there are. Remember the standing waves in the vibrating membrane? There were nodes that were angular nodes that went across, and there were nodes that were radial nodes. The higher L is, the more of the nodes are angular nodes. So this just is a parameter that tells about shape. M sub L tells where these angular nodes are showing up. That's sort of an orientation parameter. The fourth quantum number, M sub S, is specific for the electron. Turns out that they can only have two values of their spin about any arbitrary axis. We conventionally call those up and down. Electrons are a special type of particle called a fermion. Fermions have the special property that no two fermions can be in the same wave. They cannot occupy the same quantum state. What this practically means is two electrons in the same atom cannot have exactly the same wave function. They can be in the same wave with the same nodes as long as there's just two of them, one of them spin up and one of them spin down. So what this means is that you can't just have all of the electrons in an atom at the lowest energy. You can only have two at the lowest energy, one with spin up, one with spin down. Then the next electron has to go into a higher energy wave with more nodes in its standing wave pattern. More electrons still, more and more higher energies. Well, what do these orbitals look like? If you remember what the standing waves look like in a two-dimensional membrane, we can conceptually expand this idea to what the standing waves look like in three dimensions. And here's a pictorial representation of what some of them are. These L equals zero, the first row here, is showing the waves that have only circular nodes. They do not have any nodes that are planes. And so we just have positive, negative, positive, negative. That's what this orange and blue are showing is changing the sign of the amplitude. And the nodes are where the color changes. When we get to L equals one, we see that there is one node that's a plane. The sign flips as you go across the plane. So there's two of these rows that show L equals one. And as we go to the right, there are more and more uh, spherical nodes. Then L equals two, we have more complicated things. We have more planes. Here we have two planes that are crossing each other. And every time you cross a plane, you're going to be flipping the sign. These dumbbell shapes are a bit more complicated. Those happen when you mathematically combine some of these two planes and you end up with a cone as one of the nodal surfaces. The number of standing wave patterns possible increases with the number of angular nodes. Specifically, if there are n angular nodes, there are 1 plus 2n independent ways to orient them. 
So there's only one way to orient zero angular nodes, three ways for one, five ways for two, and seven ways for three. In practice, for the elements that actually exist, we don't go above three angular nodes. Mathematically and geometrically, the patterns are getting quite complex, but the idea still remains that the higher the energy of the wave, the more nodes it has. So as I mentioned, you can't put all the electrons in the same orbital. Well, what do you do? How do electrons get assigned to orbitals in a stable atom? Well, any electron that you add to an atom is going to go into the lowest energy available orbital. Sometimes you'll have multiple orbitals with the same energy, such as when you go to the level 2, which has one node in it. There are four possible orbitals with one node. One has a spherical node that is centered on the nucleus. The other three are planar nodes that cut through the nucleus. And that depends on where this nodal plane is oriented, either in the xy, yz, or xz planes. If you have more than one orbital with the same energy, one electron will go into one orbital, the next electron will go into a different orbital, and the next orbital will go into a different orbital still, until they all have one electron in them. Then, additional electrons can go in until all the orbitals have a spin-up and spin-down pair. The orbital energies themselves, well, when you have more than one electron, things become a little more complicated. If you just have one electron, number of nodes is the only thing that matters. If you have more than one electron, then they affect each other. These different nodal patterns in different shapes mean that the electrons in these different orbitals affect each other differently because they spatially overlap differently. When you have orbitals with the same number of nodes, the orbitals that have more angular nodes tend to be higher in energy.